On this sixth day of protest, the activists have released a list of demands. They're asking City Hall to nationalize the transit system. They're also asking City Hall to ensure a living wage for all drivers. When President Serge Sarkisian announced last week that Armenia would join the Russian-led customs union, it sent shockwaves through Armenia. A lot of people here in Yerevan and tourists love the city center because it's such a walkable city. You can get from one area to the other in less than 20 minutes. But imagine walking all the way from Malaga to Yerevan. Hello and welcome to CivilNet as we celebrate Reanimania 2013. Joining us from Switzerland is Mr. George Switzkabel. The organizers of this show say middle-class families in Qatar have high purchasing power despite low oil prices. The Tumo Center marries arts and technology. It gives kids of all ages a chance to learn about animation, computer programming, robotics and design. It also helps them acquire the skills needed for a 21st century job. We've read a lot about Aram Aram in, uh, in mainstream media, and Armenian media. There was a, a big celebration when you premiered it at the LA Film Festival. For those who don't know about the film, tell us the story. In the dark of night and the rain, they walk west, their final destination unknown. Most are from Syria, escaping war, all trying to find refuge somewhere in Europe. A mourner recites the names of victims in this graveyard and homes. Thirty-six names, thirty-six people he calls martyrs. Sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, all civilians, the rebels say, all killed during an airstrike. They say Russian helicopters are responsible. They were killed while waiting in line for bread. They are innocent people. They are not ISIL. We only have God on our side. The Syrian government launched a new offensive on homes in the last few days. It's not its first on the rebel-controlled province, but this time it has Russian air support. In the town of Der Ma'ali, activists say another 20 civilians were killed, leaving behind a blood-soaked prayer rug, a drinks machine and a large bomb crater. Police in India make arrests in connection with last week's deadly train attacks in Mumbai. And I'm Paul Chaturjian, you are watching IPP World News. <music> Nearly 4,000 Americans have already arrived in Cyprus. Thousands more could leave Lebanon on Saturday. Cyprus is asking the European Union for help with the influx of Lebanon's evacuees. As many as 50,000 Lebanese refugees have crossed the border into Syria. Some are seeking asylum and shelter inside the Damascus Stadium. Many more are fleeing their homes to escape the Israeli bombardment of Hezbollah stronghold south of Beirut. In an exclusive interview with CNN's Nick Robertson, Lebanese President Emil Lahoud said Lebanon is prepared to defend itself against an Israeli invasion. The global death toll has reached 132, but one country that seems to have the situation under control, at least for now, is Thailand. Mimi Gratachang Nantera joins us with an update. When we come back, three suspected terrorists under arrest in India. Police are linking the men to the bloody terror attacks in Mumbai. Indian police say there's definite evidence that three suspects in the Mumbai train blasts have terrorist links. Three were arrested on Thursday in connection with the attacks. He's old, confused and homeless. But South African police say he's not their responsibility, so they left him to fend for himself. It is moving northeast at 43 kilometers per hour and it's expected to continue picking up speed as it moves. This motion could bring Daryl's center near or over Nova Scotia, Canada, Friday or Saturday. Europeans are also suffering from a heat wave. At least 31 people have died of health problems related to the heat. In France, the population is advised to keep windows closed, take showers frequently and drink lots of water. So the situation is reminiscent of this past summer's 2003s when some 15,000 people died across France as a result of a heat wave. After today's stage of the Tour de France, U.S. cyclist Floyd Landis remains in third place, 30 seconds behind overall leader Oscar Pereiro. Italia's Matteo Tassado won the 18th stage. He prevailed in a sprint against two other breakaway riders as the three-week race left the Alps. Pereiro held on to the race's yellow jacket, yellow jersey rather, as he and other top contenders rode in a trailing main pack over the relatively easy stage. 
The race's big shakeout is expected on Saturday in the second and final individual time trial. This will be the last big test of cycling's premier race before it ends Sunday in Paris. And I'm Paul Chadurjian. We'll be back with an update of the headlines after a short break.